Hey guys, and welcome to the video. This is part two of the little Artemis for PS3 miniseries that we are doing. It is assumed that you've already seen part one. We're not going to be covering pretty much anything we covered there. So in order for you not to be lost, you may want to watch that video because you might be lost since we're going to pick up right where we left off and we're pretty much not going to cover anything that we covered in that video. If you ask any questions that the first video covers, I'm just going to direct you to that first one. So please make sure to watch that one first. So let's go ahead and let's conclude this little mini series with part two of Artemis for the PS3. All right, so here we are at the Final Fantasy X2 Remastered Cheats page. By the way, before we continue, I mentioned in the last video that at least for me, the only cheats that worked are the ones that have like an AOB in front of them. You'll run into this a lot. And I also told you that the cheats that don't have an AOB in front of them, at least for me, they didn't even seem to be attempted to get written to the game and they would never work. But your results may vary. I still don't know what the difference is between AOB and the cheats not having an AOB, except that for me, AOB usually works. So just give it a try, even if they don't have that AOB in front of it. Worst case scenario is they just won't work for you. OK, so when you activate a cheat, just press X and you'll see this once box pops up, right? That means that those cheats are activated and they will be written to the game. If you press square, you can change the ones to constant and then it'll go back to once if you press square again. What this means is that the cheat will get written either once to the game or it'll be written constantly. In most cases, once will work just fine. It will work either for most of the game or all of the game until you know you turn it off and come back to it. But there are some times where the cheat has to be written constantly. When you have a cheat in the constant state, there's a greater chance that something can go wrong, especially if you have multiple cheats running constantly. You're just begging for something to go wrong. Something can even go wrong when you just have a couple of cheats running. For example, here, if I love this one as constant and I ran these two at once, there could be a conflict when these two cheats write and this one is writing constantly and it may cause the game to freeze or the system to crash or something like that. Or you could have a game where you're having one cheat running constantly and you got like six or seven cheats running once and everything will work perfectly. It just depends on the games and the cheats you use and the number of cheats as well. So in what case do you use once or constant? Let's go ahead and cover that. All right. So identifying whether a cheat needs to be ran as a one time thing or constantly is actually pretty simple and straightforward, but it does take trial and error. And as I mentioned in the last video, that is what Artemis is all about. Try and try again. Anyway, let's say I was to activate these three cheats. Let's pretend the top one was infinite ammo. The second one is infinite like grenades. And the third one is infinite health. You start your game. Everything seems to work fine, but the infinite health one doesn't seem to work at all. You're taking hits. Your health is going down. We'll come back here, change the infinite health to constant, you know, leave these two the same, start the game. And if the game works and you notice that now your health is infinite, then you know that this cheat has to be written constantly. Again, remember that every time you run one cheat, even one in the constant writing state, the odds of something going wrong are greater, especially if you pick more cheats and or if you pick more cheats that have to be constantly written. So just, again, keep that in mind. But that's how you can tell. It's very simple and straightforward, but it does take a little bit of trial and error. And now let's talk about bad cheats. I already explained in part one where these cheats came from. They're not from the developer and how those cheats, or I should say these cheats here, were more than likely designed to be used with some other tool like an RTM tool or something like that. And that using them with Artemis, although most of the time they will work, you will run into a problem, especially if you use this homebrew with various games where one of the cheats, at least one, will break the game, cause it to freeze, 
cause your system to crash or something along those lines. I normally tell people to only run three to five cheats at a time. So if there is a problem with one of them, it's easier to identify. So let's say here, for example, I would activate these three cheats and start the game. When a cheat is bad, normally what happens is that you will, when you attach Artemis, you will get instantaneous freezing. You attach Artemis and then your system just locks up. Whenever that happens, I would say like 99% of the time, it's because a cheat is bad. But sometimes your game will freeze right when you go into a level or right when you started, or maybe you're in the game for 10, 20, 30 seconds or a minute or less, and you experience freezing, crashing, something like that. That just means you have more than likely a bad cheat. Again, bad cheats usually t make things go wrong. They tend to make issues happen very quickly, either right away when you attach Artemis or right from the beginning when you're starting to play the game or go to the game. So once you've activated these three, if that happens to you, let's say you would come here, you turn off one of the cheats, leave the other two on, and go ahead and run the game. If the same problem happens, turn on the one you turned off, turn off this one, launch the game again. If the issue happens again, then you know more than likely it's this cheat. The num we'll call this the number one cheat because it's the first one. So let's turn on these two and turn off number one. And then if the game works fine and the cheats work fine, then you know the issue was number one. But you want to make sure to turn everything off and turn on what you think is the problematic cheat and have it run by itself because you want to make sure that it's the problematic one. And then if you experience that issue, then you know, yes, this one is the problem. Now, I also mentioned that because it could be that this cheat doesn't like to work nice with other ones. It only runs when it's by itself. So maybe you run it on its own and you're like, hey, wait, it's working. Well, then that just tells you that uh, it doesn't work when you run it with other cheats. Maybe there's some type of conflict because we ran it with cheat number three and it didn't work. Then we ran it with number two and it didn't work, but we ran it by itself and then it worked. But in most cases, these problematic ones like this, when you run them by themselves, they still will cause that problem even when you run them alone. And then, you know, you can't use this cheat anymore. Now, here's something that may come up when you're trying to identify which cheats are bad. It's possible that within your grouping, you have more than one that's bad. So for example, here we identified one as being bad, two and three work. Let's say you activate four, five, and six. The game starts, everything works fine. The cheats work. Well, now we know that two, three, four, five, and six all work, right? So then you activate seven, eight, and nine and you run into a problem. When you attach Artemis, it immediately freezes or the game immediately freezes when it starts or whatever. So you go through the whole deal. You come back here, you turn off number nine, you run seven and eight, and you realize that the problem is still happening. You come back, you turn on nine, turn off eight, it's still happening. And then you're like, okay, well, the problem must be number seven. You turn off seven, you run eight and nine, and oops, the problem is still happening. And you're like, wait, I turned off number seven. Why is this still happening? Well, it's possible that one of these or maybe all of them are bad as well. So in order to do that, you'll need to do them one at a time if you run into that problem. So you would turn on number seven, run it by itself. Let's say the problem still happens. You come back, run number eight by itself and number eight cheat runs great game runs, the cheat runs. Okay. You'll have to then run number nine by itself. And then you realize that this one is also a problem. It causes the freezing almost immediately or when you attach Artemis. Now you've identified seven and eight as being a problem. I mean, seven and nine as being a problem, but number eight is good. So now, you know, within the first nine cheats, one, seven and nine are bad and they can't be used. I know this is again kind of tedious, but this is how Artemis is. And again, 
You need to just go through this in order to try and get the best experience you can. I'm not saying that there will be that many bad cheats within you know such a small group. It's possible you can have 30 cheats and maybe one is bad. Maybe out of 15 cheats, none of them are bad or out of 10 cheats, half of them are bad. But who knows? Because they haven't been tested on this platform or maybe they have, but nobody is putting out any information out there. But now you know what to do in case you have to start sorting through all these cheats to realize which ones are the problematic ones. All right, now we're here at the binary domain page. And I told you in part one, binary domain would be the example we would be using. Before we head on over to the XMB and then start our game, one thing I do want to mention is that you can use game save cheats along with Artemis and it should not create a conflict. For example, I did a video just recently on how to use brute force save data on your PC to add cheats to your game saves. Of course, not all games are going to have cheats available for them, but you can check. You can also use the Apollo game save tool here available for PS3. I have not done a tutorial on that yet, but when I do, I'll put that in the description. Those cheats are into the game saves. It's just data that's written to the save. This writes the cheats in real time, so there should be no conflict whatsoever. So you can combine the two to maybe get better results from your game. Okay, let's go ahead and let's pick the cheats. I'm gonna pick these three because this cheat, the infinite credit one, actually causes the game to freeze right at the beginning every time. But it just so happens that there was a cheat available for the game save. So I applied it using brute force and then I got my infinite credits. Once you pick your cheats, let's go ahead and hit start. Let's hit start game. You'll hear the PS3 beep once, and that is to confirm that everything is good. I'll meet you at the XMB. Okay, so here we are at the XMB. Before we launch the game, I already told you in part one, we covered stuff regarding those CFW Siskel's files, how Artemis works, cheating online, and disabling some of the stuff maybe you have running in the background like webman mod c cappy and things like that it's assumed you've taken care of all of that go ahead launch the game when you launch it don't press anything else just let it be until we get to the title screen and i'll tell you why so let's go ahead and launch the game all right guys so you may have noticed when your game booted up in the upper right hand corner it said press start to attach artemis you don't need to do that as a matter of fact I would suggest that you wait until you are in a level where you have control of your character or characters. When the action is happening, that's when you attach Artemis. Sometimes, depending on your game and the cheats, a cutscene can cause freezing. The intro of a game can cause freezing, or you can just have problems here, like with something like this at the title screen. So wait till you're in the actual level to go ahead and attach Artemis. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and then we'll conclude the video by just covering a couple of other quick things. All right, guys, so here we are at the start of the level. I have control of my character and everything to attach Artemis or activate it. Just tap the PS button. Wait until everything loads. You see everything loaded, then hold the start button for like a second or two. Let it go. You're going to see everything is going to kind of freeze. Give it a few seconds and you should get a confirmation in the upper right hand corner that Artemis has attached and wrote. Once the notification disappears, you can go ahead and go back into your game. If after 30 seconds, nothing happens and you're stuck here and the game is frozen, that more than likely means that you have a bad cheat that is causing the issue. You have to reboot the PS3, go back and look for that bad cheat the way we covered earlier. So hopefully everything went good for you. Go ahead and go back into the game and test out your cheats. Let me go ahead and fire and you can see my ammo is not going down. It may be possible that when you go into a new area or a new level that the cheats stop working. If this happens to you, just detach Artemis and reattach it and usually the cheats will work again. To detach, simply tap the PS button, wait until everything loads again, hold down the select button for one or two seconds 
and let it go and it will say Artemis has detached as you can see and then just head back into your game. Now just to show you, you can see here the uh, cheat is still working. So the cheats that are being written once, those should still work even when you've detached Artemis. The ones that will not work when you've detached are the ones that you set to write constant. So when you go into a new level, a new area, if the cheats don't work, detach and then to reattach is the way I showed you earlier. Tap the PS button, hold down the start button for a couple of seconds and wait for the confirmation. All right. So you may come across a cutscene or an event or something like that that may cause the game to freeze or it may cause your PS3 to crash. If that happens, the next time you play it before you hit the cutscene or the event, just detach Artemis and you should be able to make it through the cutscene without any issues. Once you're done with the cutscene and you're back in your level and you have control of your character and you know you're in the action part like here, then go ahead and reattach Artemis and you should be good to go. And that is going to do it for this tutorial, guys. Sorry it was so long. You know that I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful in any way, please make sure that you hit that like button. Much love going out to everybody out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun. And we will see you on the next one.